Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Soul Truth Conversation Show. We are on episode 15. I can't believe it. This is so exciting. And I have the most beautiful woman that we're going to interview today that we're going to get really soulful and truthful and um, just see what comes through. We've got the beautiful Elizabeth Sargent. So hi, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for being here. Hello. Hello, Claire. Thank you for inviting me. Super exciting. Yay. So Elizabeth, is a functional medicine practitioner and she's founder of women's health and wellness company well-nourished club liz and her team help high achieving women optimize their health and hormones and performance so that they can have a sustained high impact at work and deep connections at home liz's mission in life is to empower women which i love so we're both <laughs> in the same game there but with liz it's the knowledge and the intuition and practical insights to harmonize uh, to harmonize hormones and master their energetics so elizabeth i have no idea about this topic whatsoever <laughs> i absolutely love this i cannot wait to <laughs> dig into this so first of all just so that the listeners can start to get to uh, know you a little bit more what i love to do on the on these calls is just give you the opportunity to share a little bit about your story and how you ended up working with hormones and energetics energetics and all your good stuff that you love to talk about oh my goodness okay fantastic so this is kind of like yeah it'll be a short story of my life and all the things that have brought me to where I am right now um so for me um yeah let me get it, come at it from the perspective of hormones and energetics actually so for me my relationship with energy um and hormones starts kind of at a young age um kind of really started to my life when I had glandular fever in my teens and at 18 my father passed and I went to university basically the following week and I missed freshers week but went straight into university and basically just kind of pretty much tried to forget it happened right um you know offered no kind of support back then it kind of just I don't know people just cracked on with such things mm -hmm. um but then yeah carried on very much in my very well-oiled masculine energy mm -hmm. um high achiever at school went into university high achiever at university got my corporate position so I got the graduate job and in worked in pharmaceuticals I went into pharmaceutical marketing but went up that career ladder pretty quickly moved into international um, lived in Chicago, so I was living in London, then I lived in Chicago for a few years. Um, but all the way on that journey, there was always this niggling part of me where I felt that I was kind of performing mm -hmm. every day, right? I, because I was very well practiced at being this version of me that performs to a certain level, that delivers, that is ambitious, that you know all these things but yet at, that version of me wasn't like the fun silly Liz right. who would be at home so I'd kind of like step into the office and have a difference so there's a bit like having a bit of a split life and there was always this niggle at the back of my head as in this isn't really what you are kind of meant to be doing you know you're meant to be I was lucky that I had a lot of freedom at work so I was lucky that I was able to be entrepreneurial in those roles otherwise I think I would have resigned and gone in a different direction sooner yeah. but anyway came to my early 30s and I realized the work that I was doing in the pharmaceuticals whilst I actually I did enjoy it I got to work a lot with clinicians and patients I was initially working in HIV and then I was working in autoimmunity but there was always that you know underlying line that when you come back to the office it kind of was around the bottom bottom line really so like you know the, the profits etc and I wanted to work a lot more hands-on with people and also I wanted to have my own business because I've always had that entrepreneurial streak yeah. so I then re kind of I my training is in biology and genetics way back yeah. um so I kind of repositioned my training then went into doing uh, firstly masters in nutrition and then went down the functional medicine training route which has got me to where I am now, yeah. which is then where I built the, uh, the the functional medicine clinic and the women's health clinic. But for me, my story, going back to kind of like those energy links, is 
being so dominant in this masculine energy right from a young age then having first of all I guess a the glandular fever you wouldn't necessarily call it a traumatic event but from a biological and um, physiological perspective mm-hmm. it's pretty significant it was with me for years um then obviously a traumatic event of losing my dad but never ever grieving mm. until um I started that process five years ago or probably about six years ago now um and then just being in that high achiever energy that very dominant masculine energy you know when you become a mother that kind of controlling energy just gets like heightened to all the full extent so as I then went into my 30s I then had came down with um adrenal dysfunction it was called um adrenal fatigue back then which is definitely not a correct terminology for it now um but it's adrenal dysfunction which really sort of brought me down with all the symptoms that I don't know if you know anything about adrenal dysfunction but basically it gives you all the symptoms right from kind of low mood um real fatigue um night sweat loss of cycle or regular cycle kind of some of those extreme sort of PMS type symptoms um blood sugar crashes inability to concentrate which seem like a really broad spectrum of symptoms right so a lot of women who experience this would go to the doctor they'll do some tests and say oh nothing's wrong with you you're let me just give you some antidepressants or something right yeah, yeah. um but fortunately uh, at that time I was doing my functional medicine training so um I quickly recognized and put this together. So my, that's kind of where it all ignited. So I was already doing the training, but it ignited my passion then to move into this area, initially kind of starting looking at sort of burnout, working with high high achieving women around adrenal dysfunction and burnout, um, and now really bringing in a lot more of the hormone piece, because obviously a lot of that a lot of that kind of dominant masculine energy it affects our entire entire system mm-hmm. um you know our gut being kind of like a central core port 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 place and then the adrenals um the nervous system and our whole endocrine system which is all of our hormones and our monthly cycles and the jazz as we move into perimenopause yeah wow there's a lot in there <laughs> there's a lot in there and some of it like I could really relate to so Um, you know when you were talking about um, you know I I went through depression and I remember those days where I just wanted to sleep couldn't get up Um, you know yeah what's wrong with me the moods and you know I then got later diagnosed with bipolar and then all these labels were stacking up on top of each other Um, and I love what you're you're doing so how first of all I'd love I want to ask the question is like what is functional medicine like what is that first of all so functional medicine, it looks at the like the person as a whole, so your whole entire body system, because all of our different systems are interlinked and related. If one system's experiencing some extra pressure, some stress or some dysfunction or imbalances, the other systems will support it and try and make up for the imbalances, which, as you can imagine, over time, then cause you know this knock-on cascade effect so functional medicine firstly looks at the whole person Mm -hmm. and then looks at their environment their lifestyle and importantly their entire health history so when I work with someone I want to know what your journey is where have you come from you know even since before birth but Right. right understanding what are the different things that have influenced who you are from a emotional perspective and a physiological perspective to get you to where you are right now and what you're experiencing right now with regards to health wellness symptoms you know how it is ever you're you're moving through the world and then it's around looking and what where do you desire to be how do you desire to lead yourself what is it you're wanting for yourself and that's then when we start to start kind of like peeling off some of the layers and getting down to the root cause of mm. the dysfunction so that could be um so I so I work with a lot of other practitioners like trauma um informed practitioners um to help with some of the nervous system side of things yeah. um but then we're starting to look we might bring in some functional testing to really see what's happening at a biological level um 
you know, either inside your gut or with your hormones or exposure to toxins, if you've got a toxin burden that's putting pressure on the system. So we really then just start looking at everything all together and getting a full picture to then make a plan moving forward. I love that. It was like, you know, with the depression and stuff for me, it was like down the doctors and take a tablet. Yeah. Without looking, you know, now I know underlying it was like, you know, I, I wasn't really, I didn't really have a relationship with myself. I wasn't really honoring myself. I was going through the exact thing. Like you were saying, like work, high achieving and, you know, getting the grades, getting the jobs, holding on these big job titles that had a lot of responsibility and then motherhood comes and then you have all that impact in as well and you know for me it was about I wasn't being truthful to the lifestyle that I wanted and the the life that I wanted to live and I got stuck in this very much like you know just sort of like the cycle of life you know go to college do your stuff get your grades get your job earn the money marry the man have your kids and yeah I was still you know I used to feel really guilty for that and that was showing up in my body as well because that was Mm. not working with the life that I actually desired um so I walked away from that marriage but that did leave so I got a couple of questions that are coming through that Mm. I want to talk about what are the different systems in the body like you know we know about emotions and things like that but how many systems do we have in our body and what once I know that like how do they interact with each other and what are the knockoff effects so thinking about somebody like myself that went through depression bipolar um yeah really not you know loving who I was back then not being truthful what of the systems would that have had an impact on because all I knew was go to the doctors and take this tablet yeah right and could that still even though obviously I've done a lot of work a lot of healing work and I love who I am now I'm I'm living more my truth now does that still have an impact are there things that could still be in in any of the differences sorry I'm throwing so much at you but yeah loads of questions (laughs) yeah it's a really really amazing question and actually when you think about the different systems kind of like who you're talking to and their perspective will also change some of the systems the systems that you might talk about so obviously there's the core system I'll I'll talk about some of the courses but then we've got the energy systems right which I know you are really tapped into um and the emotional self so for you that connection with self with who you are with a a higher self whatever that might look like for you so that I just want to preference that that is a really important system and I think system because it's you know much bigger than that the bit a huge piece of of the energy but that really I think when it comes down to a a physiological system is very much linked with your nervous system Mm. and that system then obviously touches everything else so some of the core systems particularly if we're thinking around sort of depression and mood would be I'd start there with the gut so the digestive system Mm. so whenever I'm working with someone who's got kind of kind of mood disorder or depression I mean, actually, when I work with anyone, I always start with the gut. But the gut's really important from that perspective because the gut and the brain have a direct, um, a direct communication channel. Yeah. Seventy over seventy percent um, of serotonin is produced in the gut. In fact, actually, it might be as I said that I'm like, actually, I think it might be nearly ninety percent. But the the oh. the majority of serotonin is produced in the gut as well as other neurotransmitters. So your gut is a really, really important place. So often when I'm working with women who have got some sort of mood disorders, we see either gut infections. So that could be a bacterial infection. It could be a parasite infection. Parasite infections do seem to be very common. Um, and or yeast, yeast overgrowth. Um, and they can have, the yeast particularly can have a systemic effect, but the impact of a parasite or a bacterial infection and a yeast infection changes that gut ecosystem and when I say it changes that gut ecosystem it changes the 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 diversity of and I'm going to again do quotations of good bacteria and this is important because these bacteria are creating various communication molecules they're influencing the level of systemic inflammation so inflammation that you experience across your body they influence so many of all these other systems within us not just the brain, but we have got this really strong brain gut connection. The other aspect is leaky gut. So if you have led a high kind of 
vibe life and been in a, a prolonged stress, um, whether that's emotional stress or been in stressful situations from a high performing perspective, the chances are you will have something called the increased gut permeability. And again, that kind of activates the immune system. So it's a little bit like having your immune system kind of on high alert for a prolonged period of time. And again, that has such a big impact systemically and on brain health. Mm. Um, so that's one system. And then and that's one of like the core ones. And yeah. obviously the others, you've got the, like the, the brain and the kind of neurobiology. You've got your endocrine system, which is your hormones. So that is very closely linked with the nervous system because your endocrine system, um, you know, you've got insulin and then you've got on the other side on the hypothalamus pituitary and adrenal access you've got cortisol and adrenaline so these are this is where they start seeing them all linking together insulin is to do with blood sugar regulation and then these in turn are very much connected with your sex hormone so which is why you see when you've got these high performing women start to have kind of either disruptive cycles or having a really hard time as they're going through perimenopause um, you know PMS you know PMS is very common mm -hmm. uh, lots of people experience PMS and they think it's normal but it's not normal no one should be experiencing any PMS at all um, it's really just your body's it's incredible because we have as women we have this beautiful barometer you know our monthly cycle is a beautiful barometer of our overall health so every month we get to check in how am I inside how is everything going now if we're experiencing PMS that you know, whether it's a heavy periods, painful periods, low mood, acne, irritability, headaches, it's your body saying we need to check in and it isn't something we should be. But we, as a society, that's a whole other conversation, as a society, we kind of just accept that as being normal. Right. Um, but yeah, so we have all these systems and you can see just like it's obviously others, but you can see how they start thinking yeah, together. Yeah, it's funny because the thing that always affects with me is always in the tummy always in the stomach um whether that goes from like being bloated or it goes quite solid um feels like I've eaten like <laughs> been to the buffet like all day long and you've just had like a sandwich or something and it, it's just and it definitely yeah. you know come out quite a lot it it doesn't do it very often nowadays um but it always did everything showed up in the tummy for me whatever was going on would show up so either you know it would be really great and it would feel you know really quite fit and I could seem to be able to eat whatever I wanted to and it didn't make any effect and then another time you're trying to be really good or healthy and stuff and then you know the stomach would completely you know do these things like bloat out and literally like balloon up and it's like what like this doesn't make sense but that was all through a time where yeah there was depression bipolar and even sometimes now you know if nervous system's going off or you know there's some stress that comes in like last year my partner had a stroke my dad recently um was going through cancer and had to have surgery and you know there's lots of stuff kids at school you know all the stuff that goes on so even though like you know I tend to see all those things for us and I very much lean into that and can cope I still allow myself to be human but it's always in the tummy. If something's a bit, mm, it will show up in that way for me. Is that quite common? Yeah, absolutely. And when you've got um, any, uh, that is common. So any kind of stress, emotional stress, whatever stress it is, it, 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 it's so linked. That nervous system is so linked and the brain is so linked with the, with the stomach and with the gut. A lot of women will either experience like, stomach issues like feeling sick heartburn reflux or it becomes bloating and mm. then it would become like urgency to go to the toilet or constipation which whatever your constitution is and a lot of that as well though so a part of it is obviously looking at nervous system regulation um but the other part is actually understanding actually what is going on in the gut because i know for me when when i went through my journey um obviously I had the adrenal dysfunction I got over that but I had a lot of ongoing gut issues which whilst being pregnant breastfeeding pregnant again and breastfeeding I couldn't really do a huge amount about yeah. but when I finally was able to kind of really 
look at what's going on in my gut. I had a parasite infection. I had, path had pathogenic bacteria going on. And I was actually talking to someone the other day and I can't, I can't remember if I had yeast or not as well, but quite possibly it was all thrown in there. But I had been managing those system, system, symptoms really well by just modifying my diet. Yeah. But really when it came down to it, it, there was a lot of dysfunction going on that had obviously been going on for a long time because of all these added stresses on, this, on the whole body, which means our, my immune system wasn't on in a good space. And my, my stomach acid was really low, which allowed some of these things to start to take, take hold. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was then really sort of treating, going through protocols to treat that. And then the stomach issues um, had, and that had then a knock-on effect. The stomach issues stopped and had a knock-on effect systemically. Right. Amazing. So yeah, so you work with high-end women. So the sort of stresses that they go through, um, do you work with entrepreneurs? Do you work with, you know, people in corporate, both? Like who's your ideal client? Yeah, I work with both. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I've got a mix. I work internationally. So I have, um, I think most of my corporates are here in the UK. That's probably more around kind of like my, probably more my LinkedIn network, to be honest. Um, and then, yeah, entrepreneurs are all over the world, Australia, New Zealand, quite a few in the US. Um, so yeah, so all, I think it comes down to it's all my ideal client are women who are very connected with self mm -hmm. and really understand that we are the vessel that leads ourselves through life. We are the, the leading light of our companies or of our mission or of our quests, whatever it is that we are shining a light on during our time in the world, us emotionally and physically are the light that's going to do that so actually how we how well we are and how healthy we are and how connected we are with our hormones and our body is kind of like a foundational piece to all of our businesses and I think it was really interesting I was out on a walk and this question came into me it was probably a couple of months ago and it was around how my um like my health is really a reflection of my relationship with self. And as that came in, I was like, that says a lot about my history because my relationship with self was very much around trying to achieve a lot, mm -hmm. busyness. Obviously I was sort of trying to ignore the whole grieving process I need to go through. So there's a lot of like emotional bypassing going on. Um, but in that high achieving mode, Oh, well, I can deal with that once I've got this done. I can deal with that once I've got that done. So it's just com about completely flipping that around. And the women that come to me have made that flip. They're like, if I want to grow and scale my business and then hold that business, you know, as the business gets bigger, maybe as it becomes more complex, I need to be completely switched on I need to have the clarity I need to have the creativity I need to inspire I need to lead yeah. and in doing that I need to leave myself first and I need to have confidence mm -hmm. because that's the other thing when I first started out in this entrepreneurial space I was still kind of recovering from the adrenal fatigue and I would have times when I would say do a launch and then be absolutely flat afterwards and I'd have this kind of nervous system peak trough peak trough and health trough health trough and actually, it was all around actually wanting to, you know, get back into connected to myself so I can hold the business that mm -hmm. I'm connecting and um, building. And that's that's the connection that the women that I work with um, 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 are leading themselves with. Um, and actually, the other thing is a, a few women that have actually come to me over the last couple of weeks. I think that suddenly they all come in. But I want to I'm going into my 40s yeah. and I want to make sure I'm in the best space from a health and hormone perspective that I can be, I want to understand what my hormones are doing now. Yeah. So that when I go into my forties, I can recognize, I can adjust, I can flex mm -hmm. depending on what my body is telling me. I, for the last 20 years, I may have been taking the pill or I may be just living this lifestyle. It, it's kind of like they, there's this kind of awakening moment doesn't yeah. happen to everyone. And I, when these women, it's just a few of them have come to me just over the last few days. I'm like, this just makes me sing, you know, because this leading yourself into this phase of your life really just from a 
connection to self from a health perspective is so so powerful and i think um you know i resonate with this so much so last year i was super fit super healthy had the best relationship with myself and then simon obviously had the stroke and i thought i could you know just keep grabbing the costa coffees Mm -hmm. and the sandwiches and you know eating bowl of cereal at night because we were on the road up and down the hospital for weeks you know just not even sure what was going on with him and I was like this is great because I'm still keeping off the way I'm you know obviously not working out but everything's fine and then like over time that started to show back through and when I was looking at this again like really really recently it was kind of like do you know I don't want what everybody's I don't want everybody to tell me what I should be doing and I got like in a space where people like eat protein don't eat protein eat carbs they're good for you don't eat carbs eat fish is really good don't eat fish because of the pollution eat meat don't eat meat and I and it just like frazzled my brain that was just in terms of the food and the fitness let alone hormones everything else playing around like I'm 46 so yeah I completely get that and I just came back to a space like you say as a soul-led woman as a self-led woman I was like I want to listen to my body what does my body want to eat right now what does what exercise does my body want to take how does my body want to move because if somebody gives me a structure or gives me a routine I will fit into that and I do really well on that but then it's very kind of limiting and it's very much into a routine and what happened last year that worked may not necessarily now work for me now moving yeah. forward you know we've still got Simon who's recovering and four kids and all the bits and pieces and I always used to battle with myself like how come it was so easy then I was eating really healthy I was eating the same thing all the time most of the time apart from an evening meal and the exercise was very routine three times a week it's very fairly simple but it worked because I had such a close relationship with myself and I'm realizing this year obviously I've been split in so many different avenues um you know with Simon with the stroke and stuff that I'm having to start to come back but yeah, I want to listen to my body. I want my body to say what's right, what's wrong. And yeah. I think there is a new movement. I do think women are starting to wake up to go. They don't just want to do hit training all the time. They don't <laughs> want to just do cardio all the time. Or, you know, they don't want to just do the yoga. It's just like listening to the body. So what are the signs that you, you know, I know this is going to be very individual for everybody, but what are the, so say, sort of telltale signs? Let's do a couple of um, signs where maybe you're not working or leading yourself or listening to your body. What sort of things start to show up, especially as an entrepreneur that you see? And then against, you know, then we could sort of do a versus when you do start to listen to your body. These are the things, you know, just in my head, I'm going to need it, the glow, the shine you know the things like that versus you know maybe you know what you know I'm just on a very basic level but I'd love to do that kind of when you're not listening to your body these are the some of the things that could come out that you may recognize but these are the things that do start to happen when you are self-leading and listening to your body and coming to somebody like yourself who can run the test to see what's going on inside because even some of the words that you're saying I'm like oh my god it feels like I need to go read a dictionary to like go and find out what these technical are. <laughs> no, it's fine. but then that's the problem you know a lot of women don't have the knowledge you have that's why they come to you and you can't you can't see on the inside you can only see mm-hmm. what happens on the outside so yeah let, let's run through that little exercise I'd love to know that oh okay what yeah are the signs of somebody not listening to their body Mm. not picking up on yes so some of the things that would initially come up would be fatigue on waking so waking up feeling kind of tired feeling fatigued potentially kind of sort of dragging your feet a little bit through the morning or um having some sort of blood sugar dysregulation first thing in the morning so you might have breakfast then feel quite hungry quite soon afterwards or you have an energy drop at some point in the morning um again the same is true of the afternoon if you're having like an afternoon slump um or you really start to get fatigued at that point um another thing would be if you find it difficult to concentrate or you get overwhelmed easily so you, you find it difficult to process and organize complexity. Um, 
the I guess the inability to be be able to switch into your creative part mm. of your brain yeah um, if you find that you feel like you're kind of a little bit wired or buzzing you're not able I'm doing this because that's a that's a way to kind of just bring some of that nervous system back down so I'm sort of imagining it I'm kind of doing the opposite um if you find you have that kind of buzzing feeling or a fullness kind of here in your sort of sacrum mm. area that's yeah. kind of also a, an, an indication um other things a really big big one is obviously our monthly cycle that just tells us straight away if something's out of whack so if you're experiencing one or two weeks some women experience two weeks a month when you you feel potentially low you have a lot of self-doubt you might have heavy periods painful periods um anxiety uh acne headaches a lot of those sorts of kind of monthly cyc cyclical so if you might find you're really excitable for two two weeks and then the other two weeks like oh I don't know if I can do this anymore or you're just irritable with people um that's a really of a, a really um good sign and obviously gut if you do experience any kind of bloating constipation mm -hmm. they're just big warning signals that you uh, kind of need to address some of the things going on mm -hmm. but I think from a, a business perspective how we show up it is around the the over the big things that influence people will be like the overwhelm the ups and downs so recovering from like a launch period or you know we should be able to lead ourselves consistently with our energy on a day-to-day -day basis throughout our month like yeah there may be a couple of days in your month when you do feel slightly lower energy and that's great but it shouldn't be to the extreme where you don't want to to sort of turn up right yeah yeah um so it's that being able to have the consistency and the clarity of thought and the creativity should be able to flow and again that will vary at different times of the month yeah. um so i think you've just like mentioned about 99 percent of every woman there <laughs> like i'm sure there's like pieces of that but somebody's like yeah at least i got that piece or that piece if not all of those pieces so yeah i think and like you say they could be very I think they could be very easily missed as well. Like, you know, mm. oh yeah, I've had a really heavy launch. That's why I'm tired or, you know, yeah. Then you give yourself rest or, you know, oh, I ate such and such yesterday. That's why I'm a bit bloated today. Do you know what I mean? There's so many other things yeah. that we sort of try and justify maybe in our head that we don't see these as so say like warning signs. These are just like, oh yeah, this happens. Like you say, we sometimes live with these things. For so many yeah. it becomes the norm so this is why i was like let's do it really this is my <laughs> engineering brain like show us a really good list here then let's go off over here and let's let's go over the other yeah. side and then start to see if we've got any of these because i know i've got a couple of these on this side like ticking off and going oh yeah interesting okay so let's yeah go on the other so side. We one of the big things that obviously we want is that consistency enable in the the motivation and inspiration to lead ourselves and lead the organizations and businesses that we're building right so having that consistency and trust in our energy and in our hormones is such a core foundational piece on the other side you know knowing that each day you're going to be able to show up with a consistent level because that's very reassuring as a woman whereas on the flip side we you know at as women with imbalances, that consistency isn't there. Mm -hmm. And that makes it a lot more difficult to be mm -hmm. able to lead a business when you've got a few days being on cloud nine, and then you've yeah. got five days where you're feeling flat because you overdid it on those days, or right. it's a particular point in your cycle. Yeah. And it's the consistency that we bring to our businesses that allow our businesses to flourish and yeah. to grow and for us to then continue to hold them because that's the other thing it's being able to calibrate to the business we are we are building yeah so um so on the other side it is it's more around flow there will be some intuition there will be that creativity is there that or obviously we're all very different from a social perspective but whatever's right for you from a social perspective whether you're like a full-on extrovert or an introvert or an extrovert introvert or yeah. all of those different things you know that flows and feels natural for you in how you desire to run run your business and show up or lead your teams um 
what other things on that side obviously you've got like the kind of the radiance the waking you know a big thing is waking up feeling rested and feeling ready to go because I think a lot of people say oh, I'm not a morning person well really you know as human beings even from an evolutionary point of view we are morning people because we rise at the sun yeah. we go out we get the uh, the food we make the fire you know whatever that looks like you know that is yeah. who we are and we need yeah. to go out and get that daylight as much as we can first thing in the mornings to reset our circadian rhythms so yeah. you're kind of not a morning person we probably and we've got a lot of those other issues going on if you're not a morning person and you're on cloud nine and your everything else is rosy then that's fine yeah. but yeah. if there's some of those other things going on we probably need to have a look at what's going on on a cyclical circadian rhythm and then obviously yeah. a 24 28 day rhythm as well there's a few imbalances going on there yeah so when somebody comes to you <clears throat> how do you actually do your work like I know you you've got a team behind you as well so what's your like what would what you actually do how do you help these women yeah so when someone comes in we really get to know them so this is and the the sort of western medicine do an amazing job at um of, within the limitations of what they have right because i have the luxury of being able to sit down and really get to know someone yeah. understand their journey as where mm -hmm. they've come from and where yeah. they are right now that's so and instead of the 10 minutes if you're lucky doctor's appointment yeah. yeah and i don't obviously want to knock that because it is an incredible medical thing for mainly for people who are have got who, who need more like emergency type care i think yeah. there's yeah. some we can ask a lot of questions of some of the chronic care um yeah. when it is just medication whereas actually if we start looking at the, what i do the root causes of actually why that person is unwell yeah. um then a, the treatment plan would potentially look very different and the outcome of their health and so, their life would look very different but so do you work with a woman who's like like they're ready to just deepen into themselves so this is more of like a refinement of who they are rather than there's like something like really really seriously wrong and you know both, both. okay cool yeah so it's either someone's coming to me and they've got um I feel like fibroids or endometriosis you know sort of significant hormonal disruption significant perimenopause um symptoms um like autoimmune conditions i was chatting to a lady this morning who has hashimoto's um and she's got a lot of gut issues going on um so either they come and they've got some significant things coming going on or they're coming and it is a, a better, an up level it's like you they've yeah. got maybe a small collection of inconsistent energy um yeah. hormonal imbalances like on a monthly cycle perspective or on a perimenopausal cycle perspective mm -hmm. a lot of these women have been operating externally at an incredibly high yeah. level yeah. and no one would know anything is wrong yeah but mm -hmm. behind the scenes they might be eating all the right food drinking the green juices having the saunas, having the infrared therapy, you know, a lot of these, some of these women have done a lot of research into health and wellness, but yet still they're not thriving. Right. And that's often, and that's another group that come to me that they've not got anything specifically wrong and they'll go and see the GP and the GP will be like, well, there's nothing wrong. Well, your labs have come back normal. Yeah. But it's what, right. what I do is look at, if we do labs, we piece different labs together and different things so we're not just looking at like one data point so we start putting things and layering things on with the history and then we start looking and healing from sort of the root causes i love that so when somebody's come to you and they've worked with you like what are the outcomes on the other end what are these women like they come in like this and they go out <laughs> like <laughs> yeah I mean it obviously varies so much from the person um but I'm just thinking of one of the ladies I was chatting to yesterday and she's she has talked about this so so um openly so she won't mind me sort of sharing but she started working with me in January and she was one of the women who has always been a really high performer and on the outside she's got it all together yeah. she used to do all the performance racing etc etc she was then diagnosed with chronic fatigue 
syndrome and for about 12 years has basically kind of just been clinging on but still performing at a high level but just clinging on she would really struggle in the morning she had terrible gut issues so she's always kind of thinking where is the bathroom in case I need to go to the bathroom and basically we started working together in February and within 10 weeks and she talks about this so openly it's like she's a completely different person wow it's just completely different she's full of energy she has not had any she she also had a lot of um she's 50 and she's also had a lot of perimenopausal symptoms as well she's she, her cycles have come back to regular 28 days wow. no night sweats migraines she used to have about seven migraines every month and they were debilitating like she would really struggle to get out of bed no migraines and and yeah and it's just her so like her life looks so completely different to the extent she's actually like you know work she's I mean it's because we work on I, I work with um women on kind of like an energetic level as well with their connection with self which was like it's completely flipped my perspective of life around yeah. you know, her daughter's in performance uh, or behavior should I say at school has massively improved she's gone from being kind of in trouble a lot to her last report saying she's one of the hardest working girls in school right and all of that was like, she's like, I know it comes down to me was how I'm leading myself at home yeah. and how I am leading my relationship with her because I've noticed it's completely changed. I yeah. have time for her. I'm connected with her because I'm connected with myself. I'm not overwhelmed by the burden of life yeah. because I've got the clarity. You know, I don't have that brain fog anymore. I don't have the pain anymore. I don't have the exhaustion anymore. And all of these things. And really when you start working on one thing, it then the snowball effects across like across all the systems you know you take a bit of pressure off and the pressure slowly just goes off all of the systems yeah it's like a ripple um, I guess it does have a huge yeah. ripple effect so um yeah it's it's amazing I love that I love that so much so Elizabeth anybody who wants to come and find you where can they find you on the online space where do you normally hang out so on Instagram, I'm at Well Nourished Club, but I mainly hang out. I do. I've got kind of very different content on Facebook and on, on Instagram. So Well Nourished Club on Instagram, Facebook is my name, Elizabeth Sargent, and LinkedIn, I'm Elizabeth Sargent as well over there. Amazing. So I feel like you're going to end up with half the country now coming over to you, half the world. <laughs> Actually, just one other thing that I think would be really helpful is just tuning into our cycles and this is some this is a whole other conversation I won't go into too much detail but as women as from a young age we are taught to disconnect with our monthly cycle as a society we don't really talk about it yeah. oh it's the time of the month oh you know okay I'll tread carefully you know there's a lot of negativity around yeah. monthly cycles so we've become disconnected and that in itself is extremely disempowering yeah. because our natural hormonal ebbs and flows in itself has such huge, I guess, superpowers in many ways, you know, how we are able to lead ourselves at different times of the month. Like you were talking about training earlier and doing exercise and doing the same people doing the same exercises every day, all month round. Well, that doesn't yeah. actually serve us yeah. because our metabolism is different at one half of our cycle to the second half. Our nervous system is slightly raised in the second half of our cycle. Our ability to utilize protein to build muscle is different in one half of the cycle right. to the other. Our um, susceptibility to injury is different in one part of our cycle to the other. So as soon as, that's just on an exercise perspective, but yeah. then you've got it on a, a neurobiology perspective, like how we engage in our business mm. um, and from an energy perspective. So I think one of the biggest things I really would urge women to do is to start attuning to the fluctuations of initially their energy throughout the month Mm -hmm. and really start thinking how does this affect how I'm turning up and leading myself on a daily basis and what does this look like to me because quite often we are disempowered with our monthly cycle and we kind of trip our way up through our month yeah this is also important as we move into our 40s because once we start to have this relationship with our cycle when our hormones start to change Mm -hmm. we can flex we can adapt we can start to attune to what those changes are rather than just not just tripping up into menopause but falling flat down on our faces into perimenopause 
Yeah. That would just be my urge is to, to get really inquisitive around your hormones because like I said kind of at the beginning that is our beautiful barometer of health and it's yeah. so finely tuned mm. yeah, let's even use if it. it even if it was as simple as you know throughout every day if you just said oh out of one in ten what's my energy level like even if that was the, the mm. minimal that people could do to check in with yeah that, that's like something absolutely at the simplest level, just checking with your energy as you move through the month. Mm -hmm. Other things you could add on would be um, uh, mood and probably mm -hmm. digestion, just to get an idea of how that is. Yeah. Um, but energy would be a big one. And then once you start noticing the patterns, you can start applying that to how you lead yourself and your business at different times of the month. Yeah. As um, I was working with... Um, a, a, a young lady she was in her early 20s and for her she came into one of my group programs and it was just really opening her eyes to see these see women talking about their cycles so openly yeah. um, and talking about how they flex um, their cycles and she found it so empowering she at work had then recently taken on leadership of a small team who were all women so I'm going to talk to the team about this. So then her team now share where they are with regards to their cycles. Wow. They flex who's being creative, who's going to do the presentation to wow. the rest of the business based on where they are in their cycles, wow. Wow. because wow. they're the ones that are going to be able to show up more powerfully. Whereas the ones that may be in their late luteal phase at the end of their cycle, or maybe on their bleed will be more in their um, analytical power mm. and their critical thinking power versus their outwardly yeah. expressive power yeah. so as a team she's like we're going to be one of the most powerful teams in this in this company because yeah. no one else is tapping into this and she right. she said she's just it's just blowing her mind wow. so we've got so many so many incredible powers within us we just, just need to listen and start to reconnect exactly yeah and it takes awareness doesn't it like you said it was never a subject for me and at home periods nothing like that so nothing whatsoever it was just like this is what happens here take one of these you know yeah. and that was it that was it even back at school like it was pretty rubbish to be quite honest. really bad it's like try not to get pregnant yeah um, and if you do here's the pill yeah yeah it'd be good <laughs> yeah, exactly oh I've loved this so much I think we've talked like forever I feel like <laughs> this is like such a huge juicy topic and I just think it's one that's so needed especially on the online space you know around women that I'm you know with trying to balance your business and for people out in corporate you know trying to hold those high powered jobs and the stresses and that 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 comes into your mm. work is just amazing so thank you so much elizabeth for this thank you thank you thank you and obviously everybody go and find elizabeth on instagram linkedin facebook go and find her and uh yeah talk to elizabeth about all the things Yay. so thank you so much i will speak to you all soon thank, thank you. you bye, bye.